Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing Game 3 of the preseason for the San Jose Sharks, in which they took on the Anaheim Ducks and lost by a score of 4-2. to two. So the second straight game on the second straight day in which the Sharks have lost to the same exact team by the same exact score. Funny how that is sometimes, but jumping right into the roster, there were, of course, as per usual, a lot of shakeups to this one. Many players getting dropped out, many players getting put back in with even a couple actually managing to remain in the lineup and let's start off immediately with the first line Thomas Bordelow did not play yesterday but did play preseason game one and Bordelow did a lot of the very similar things as he had in that game one I had originally praised him for being someone who actually did all the right things in the game it just didn't end up affecting the scoreboard at the end of the day and he had a very similar type of performance here tonight I mean just looking at his first couple of shifts of this game on this top line he was driving that line forward and got a couple of really great opportunities that could have opened the scoring for the San Jose Sharks. It just didn't end up going in and I guess technically it would go downhill from there but kind of high expectations to live up to those first very effective shifts. The only bad thing that I would say about Thomas Bordelow is that he has a tendency to be, uh, to be a bit too fancy at times. Looks for a lot of those sort of behind the back passes, no look moves, spinorama type of plays and these are fine and I don't wanted him to get rid of these plays but if you're going to try them you do kind of have to pull them off because we saw a couple of times here tonight what happens if you're unable to pull them off it ends up with a turnover going the other way and so Bordelow you want to keep encouraging this type of play because this is the type of play that will catch other teams by surprise and open up passing lanes but you got to be able to improve a bit on that. So a solid game for Bordelow for sure. Now he was flanked by a couple of wingers here tonight, Jacob Peterson and Philip Zadina. To start off with Peterson, he's playing his second straight game. And in the first one yesterday, there was a lot of rust to shake off. Peterson not exactly doing much of anything in that particular game. I will say he was slightly better here tonight, but certainly not near the level that he was at in those last few games that he played with the San Jose Sharks last season. And here's the thing with Jacob Peterson exactly he doesn't bring much else to the table besides offense his defensive game is pretty decent but honestly not super remarkable and he doesn't really have much of a physical aspect to him and so you're expecting that offense to be there and in these past couple of games it really hasn't and so it's very difficult to lock down a top nine spot never mind a top six spot with the San Jose Sharks if you're just not going to be producing there are other options throughout the lineup something that I will get to a bit later on that will just be a better possible option at least from David Quinn's perspective than have having Peterson in the lineup so he definitely has to improve over this next couple of weeks or he may not have a top spot with the San Jose Sharks even in just the top 12 and the other winger on this line was Philip Zadina also a bit of an improved performance from his previous one but still not exactly super impressive Zadina coming into a new team bit difficult obviously has very high expectations not only from you know the team themselves but also on himself he bet on himself when he sort of voided his contract contract with the Detroit Red Wings this past offseason so likely is maybe in his head a bit we'll see how things improve going into the rest of the preseason as well as going into the regular season unfortunately however at the end of this game Zadina takes a bit of a dirty hit from Zach Cashin, leaves the game. We do not know the seriousness, or at least I don't know the seriousness of this injury just yet. Perhaps he'll be right back on it the next day. Perhaps he'll be out a couple of weeks. I don't exactly know. Hopefully it's not anything super long term. That would be rather unfortunate for a player who is perhaps just coming into his own a bit as of late. On the second line, we have a couple of interesting players I guess in Carpenter and Todd I will say Todd very impressive game from him perhaps one of the Sharks better forwards on the night it's not super impactful because like I mentioned in his last game that he played in the preseason he's not exactly the type of player who's really going to factor into the San Jose Sharks not only this season but also into the future he's sort of up there in age definitely outside of the prospect age group he's more so that AHL type of veteran player that you like to acquire to help your AHL team get better sort of in the same vein as a Chris Cuolo or an Agazino from last season with the Barracuda but it is nice to see him actually doing very well because that does bode well for the Barracuda going into this next season and that is like I've mentioned many times in the past a primary target for Mike Greer. Carpenter on the other hand 
definitely not nearly as effective. Probably the weaker link on this line. But the player who I do definitely want to talk about is, of course, Danil Gushin, who over this set of couple of preseason games that he has played, as well as the couple of rookie face-off tournament games that he has played... I have noticed that at least on the power play, he's an extremely effective player with all of that space that is awarded to him when there is one less opposing player on the ice. He's able to make a lot happen, and he's been one of the more impressive power play forwards for the San Jose Sharks in preseason and in that rookie tournament. The problem that has been here for Gushin in all of the games that he has played thus far through this preseason part is that at even strength, he's just not nearly having that same type of effect. With less open ice available, Gushin has just been, a lot of the times, kind of just firing off shots wildly that have been missing the net or have been easily getting blocked slash saved by the goaltender, and it's just not been super effective for Gushin. So this is the difficulty that a lot of these smaller players like Gushin actually do have at the NHL level. It's hard to really find that open space. You have to be a lot more crafty than like a 6'2", 220 pound guy who can sort of just make the space himself. And Gushin hasn't really succeeded at that over these past couple of games. That's hopefully something that Gushin can work on moving forward. But right now, with the performances I have been seeing, while prior to the start of the preseason, back in like even prior to training camp, I was somewhat hopeful that Gushin could make a run at an NHL spot, maybe not to immediately to start the season, but at some point in the mid-season. I'm not so confident on that anymore. When it comes to the third line, we had Tristan Robbins getting a third straight game. This is pretty crazy that he actually manages to get all three games. I don't exactly understand the reasoning for that. He was the only player to actually play in the first two games, and so to see him get the third game with it also having been a back-to-back is really odd, but... Uh, Again, like with his first couple of games, he was decent, he was steady, he was okay, but nothing super impressive, definitely not anything that makes me think like this guy has really improved over the offseason and has some NHL aspirations to him. It just seems to be yet another going into next season as an AHL player. Even if it is a top six AHL player, you're hoping that development would have taken a step forward and I'm not exactly sure if it has. Then when it comes to his wingers in tonight's game, we have Brandon Coe, of course, a pro prospect for the San Jose Sharks, but probably one on the lower tier of prospects. Uh, I thought he had an okay game, somewhat hit or miss at times for Brandon Coe. There were a couple of moments where I thought like, hey, that was a pretty good play by him in the offensive zone, but his defensive zone play honestly wasn't very good, and just generally it wasn't that great of a game from Coe. The other winger on this line, kind of similar to Nathan Todd in a way, is Justin Bailey, another player who is not exactly old, but certainly outside of the prospect range in terms of age seems to be more of an AHL type of guy moving forward however had a pretty impressive game here tonight so a couple of those AHL journeymen type of players having strong games tonight for the San Jose Sharks in a loss certainly and not many of the other players were so good that it was difficult to outperform them but still it was definitely nice to see and perhaps one of Todd or Bailey can get a couple of games with the San Jose Sharks going into this next season and then finally on the fourth line I want to start start with talking about Giovanni Smith picked up in this past offseason and I mentioned earlier on that Peterson considering he's a player that really only brings offense to the table if he's not going to be producing all that much he may very well get replaced by someone who is less offensively skilled but brings other factors to the table primarily that physicality and that really starts with a player like Giovanni Smith and I was once again impressed with Smith's performance here tonight this fourth line in general was actually pretty decent getting some solid chances on net and Smith was definitely a big part of that and so not only has been able to get around the net and actually make some things happen in the couple of preseason games that he has played but he also is a bigger player he is a force physically and he's not going to be easily pushed around which is something that a lot of coaches love especially coming out of their fourth line so Giovanni Smith definitely looking like he could make the starting roster out of training camp something that I wasn't really expecting especially once the Sharks made that Eric Carlson trade that brought both Hoffman and Granlin I didn't think there was really any room for him but now it's very possible The center on this line was Cole Castles, again, a player, AHL type of guy who isn't super interesting to comment on, but the other winger on this line would be Adam Raska, and what I know Raska for is 
always having really impressive preseasons and then rookie face-off tournaments and then immediately kind of falling off in the AHL, not really making much of an impact down there. And then we sort of start the cycle again. Here tonight, Raska did leave the game early on with an injury, eventually came back and was part of, like I said, a very solid fourth line. But it's just hard to really get that hope up because every single time... Like I mentioned, Raska has this strong start that makes you think like this guy could be an effective fourth liner. It all seems to just fall apart and we're right back where we started, right back at square one. So I won't get my hopes up just yet for him, but it was a solid game, I would say. On the defensive side of things, we had Thrun being paired with Matt Benning. So Thrun getting back into the action obviously didn't have that same level of offensive game like he did in that first one. There were not two goals here tonight. There was not an assist here tonight for Henry Thrun, but at the very least, least in that game, I mentioned how his defense definitely left a lot to be desired. I think he cleaned that up a bit here tonight, definitely more solid defensively, but that perhaps came as a sacrifice due to the, or that perhaps came with sacrificing the offense. I don't think those are necessarily all that interconnected. I think he just didn't necessarily get the bounces here tonight, but still, it was a technically a getting worse but also sort of improving on the other side of things if there's one thing that i do want to mention with thrun is him on the power play he is still being trialed as the number one power play guy for the san jose sharks through this preseason we'll see exactly how that ends up going into the actual regular season but i do want to mention with henry thrun one thing that i'd like to see him improve on is his passing it's not as though that is off the mark but there's just not a lot of strength in a lot of his passes and this was especially apparent near the end of this game the Sharks got a power play and he's just making these very nonchalant weak passes to players who are looking to get a one-timer which gives so much time for the goaltender and for the defenders to actually respond to it he fed one to Bordelow which was just a very slow pass another one on the other side to Danil Gushin a few seconds later another very slow pass you want to be able to send those passes with some gusto to them kind of like what he did actually in that first First game when he did the fake shot pass to Tomas Hurdle for that goal. We need more of that and less of these sort of like weak sauce passes there at the top of the blue line. So that's definitely one thing to look to improve on. His defending partner, like I mentioned, was Matt Benning, a veteran type of player who has certainly locked down a spot here tonight, or not specifically tonight, but has already locked down a spot in the starting roster going into next year for very obvious reasons, and so not exactly the most interesting player to comment on in a preseason game. On the second pairing, we had Redim Shemek, who was going to have a difficult time to be able to actually make the starting lineup for the San Jose Sharks with the amount of other defensemen possibly taking that spot and it's going to be even more difficult now with the injury that he has sustained here tonight unlike Adam Raska who got injured and eventually returned to the game Shemek got injured early on and did not return to the game and we know Shemek has a significant injury history in his pretty short career so this can be somewhat worrying for him to see if he'll ever actually be able to come back at some point in a realistic time frame for the San Jose Sharks and even if he's coming back within a couple of months if the Sharks Sharks actually find a top six, top seven that really works, it's hard to imagine Shemek Sh get getting more than a couple of games. His defensive partner here tonight was Jacob McDonald, who I thought was all over the place. That is both an, a good thing and a bad thing, and it just reminded me of something that I mentioned a lot last season in some of the games that McDonald filled in at forward. He seems to have some strong offensive aspects and some strong offensive instincts to his game, and yet defensively leaves a lot to be desired, which is a big problem considering he is technically a defenseman so I thought he was making some very aggressive plays in the offensive zone and that was frequently leading or maybe not super frequently but it led to a couple of great chances here and there but defensively he also found himself running around a bit out of position sometimes and McDonald's the type of player who if he can kind of settle things down a bit defensively he could be a number one guy for the San Jose Sharks on the power play if Thrun doesn't exactly work out though perhaps at this point it seems as though Thrun will work out but if he's not going to be able to settle down defensively, it's not really worth the risk because McDonald, even though he has some strong offensive play, it isn't exactly leading to much production on the actual sort of scoreboard here. So that's not a super high positive for him still. And then when it comes to the final defensive pairing, we have Kyle Burrows and Akhatiuk. 
Burrows also pretty much a shoe in to make the starting lineup. I imagine just being a right-handed defenseman, veteran type of player. I liked his performance in his first preseason game. Not so much here tonight. I thought he was a bit of a step down from the previous one, but certainly not too, too bad. On the opposite side of things, Akhatiak had a very hit or miss game in his uh, uh, debut performance with the San Jose Sharks, and I thought there was a lot more hit and a lot less miss here tonight, which was definitely quite nice to see. And then finally, we had the goaltender on the game for the San Jose Sharks, Romanov. It was uh, not great, I would say. The goals that he let in weren't exactly the best goals to have let in. Some really weak shots, I would say. Uh, not even particularly screened, just beating him five hole, beating him glove side. Uh, of the goals scored by the Ducks, I would say at least two, perhaps even three of them, Romanov definitely could have had if he was just generally better, which is not, you know, the nicest thing to say, but it is definitely the truth here. And so, uh, not a very good game at all. But that would do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Saturday for preseason game four. And uh, we'll see exactly as with this couple of days break, we're likely to get a lot more training camp cuts. A lot more of the fat will be cut off. And it we'll start to actually hone in on what a starting lineup for the first game of the regular season might actually look like. Class dismissed.